Hi, I'm Chad, and you're watching Square Buddy Stuff. Hey, welcome back to the channel, everybody. We're going to be doing part three, and hopefully the last part, of our experimenting with the crankcase evacuation system. If you're not familiar with what that is, it has the little tubes that go into your exhaust, these one-way check valves, and the hose goes up to your breather, like so. And as the exhaust goes over that tube, it pulls a suction, uh, kind of a siphoning effect is what I like to call it. It's not a Venturi effect. Uh, but anyway, we're not gonna get into that. We got into that on the last video. Uh, but it pulls a vacuum or uh, pulls air from your crankcase and puts it out the exhaust. Helps uh, create a negative pressure inside your crankcase to help ring seal. And yeah, that's pretty much the basics of it. The last video, we uh, we tested out the best the best scenario, the best thing with with my application. Now, applications may vary a little bit, and I've kind of figured out what I'm gonna do with this. So, if you're new to this video or this little series, uh, go check out the last two videos, and then come back and get caught up on this, or watch this one, and then go back and watch the other ones. It doesn't matter to me, uh, but just watch them. And while you're watching, hit that subscribe button, uh, click that notification bell, and give us a thumbs up, give us a like, uh, hit me up with a comment, just say hi. Um, also, to help support this channel, you can go hit that membership deal and become a member. Uh, members will get first chance, or first uh, crack at viewing my videos, because sometimes I put my videos, uh, load them, upload them to YouTube a few days ahead and all members will get to watch the videos as soon as I put them on YouTube before everybody else when they go live. And another way you can support the channel is go to my merchandise website, squarebodystuff.shop, and pick out some merchandise. So we got the hats, we got shirts, some stickers, um, you know, these patches, and keychains. That's all we got for right now. Hopefully you can find something you like, and we'll get it mailed out to you. So what we figured out on the last video is the tubes work best when they're in this orientation, going straight down, and with the slash pointing out towards the outlet. Now I'm not sure if you can see in there or not, but it's about halfway into the stream. It's about halfway or right in the middle of the stream. That's where it pulled the most vacuum. Well, not vacuum. Pulled the most air. Uh, I never did get a vacuum reading on this. Uh, I just got a little flow meter at uh, this guy right here. I'll show you a Little flow meter thing. It's got a little ball in there whenever it, air moves over it the ball moves up and Depends on how much air is moving is how high the ball goes up. So we played around with that figured out the best thing we also tried uh, Adding the exhaust to it And it killed all the killed all the, the vacuum or killed all the flow. What happened, and I kind of go over what I figured out there in the last video. But it, once you have too much of a pipe on there, it just kills the flow. It doesn't matter, it really didn't matter. I added like six inches, eight inches. And as soon as you put much more than four to five inches past the valve or past this tube, you lost all your suction. So that kind of killed, at first I thought it kind of killed my idea of putting this, using this on the street for with the full exhaust. But then I tried it in this combination and it works. So you may not want to run hoses and tubes and all and stuff all the way back to the back of your vehicle. That's fine. I'm going to try it. I'm going to see how it works. Uh, there's another thing I thought of that it, I may do some, uh, something else to these to help scavenge too is... Of course, obviously, this is the front. With this tube being flat like that, the air, while I'm going down the highway or down the track, will be moving across this pipe. It should help pull out, but I think I'm going to put an angle on these also to where it still it works basically the same as these guys to help scavenge the air from the exhaust and effectively, hopefully, pulling more through that and hopefully helping pull a good suction on my crankcase to seal the rings 
and it also has been known to make a little extra horsepower. Uh, when we get back to the hub dyno on down the road, we will be testing that. I'll, I'll have it on there and I'll unhook it and hook it up and see how much horsepower difference it's going to make. But that's going to be a while. We don't have it. We're not quite ready to go back to that dyno yet. But anyhow, what I've got to do now is I got to cut those off. I got to weld the tubes in. And also, that stuff right there, those are for my shorties. Uh, the collector extensions I'm going to be running when I'm in race mode. If you remember in the last video I had uh, this was just a, a U-bend 3 inch pipe and I've cut it in half and I will be using these guys uh, this ball socket I call them header buddies and well these were these were my old extensions but they kind of point straight down at the ground and I don't really like that so I'm gonna use these like that to do something like this that will also help get the exhaust out of the way in case I do have some sort of catastrophic failure in the engine and it'll blow everything, coolant or oil or whatever, out away from the rear tires. Uh, the way I run it before, it just dumped out straight on the ground and if you ever had an issue, you can, you can cause a mess doing that. So I like having it put out the side. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get this stuff all welded up. I probably won't bore you with uh, a time lapse because it's just uh, welding some exhaust up and welding these tubes in. Just a little bit of welding. But once I get this all welded up, we're going to put the shorties on and I'll hook the hose up to it. And we'll start the truck up and I'll hook my little uh, flow meter up to it and we'll see how much it, it pulls with the, with the exhaust because before I've been trying to use that leaf blower which it pushes a steady stream of air. Now the exhaust on the truck, their pulses, once it gets out to the point of the exhaust, especially on the rear, once you get enough RPM, it's more of a steady stream. But we'll be able to see how that affects uh, the suction or the airflow through the evac system once we get the exhaust on there. So we still got some more science that we're gonna do, do a little more testing, and we'll get to hear squeaky run here in a little bit. We got them all welded up slash cut every every end like i was saying earlier i think that'll help scavenge just like these do it'll help scavenge the exhaust as it's going down the road or the track whatever the case may be well this is what i've come up with to test the shorties which if you look close that one's a little ways away from the bottom of the fender and this one is just up under the fender I really don't care uh, anyways let me show you what they look like so I've got the hose routed up teed off into this doohickey so let's fire him up see and probably move him out because it's gonna get loud in here and he usually knocks stuff off the walls and everything else.
we got the full exhaust back on him. You got it pulled outside already. Yeah. And for right now, the hose is just kind of zip tied along the inner rocker panel. And right here, I've got an elbow. That way, I can I don't have to have two full sets of hoses. I can just unhook this hose from the elbow and hook it into the the shorty pipes whenever I put them on. Leave that other hose just hanging there. It'll it'll work out all right. I might get another set of check valves, so I don't have to switch them back and forth. Uh, but for right now, I'm just going to switch them back and forth. No big deal. They just thread off pretty easily. a success it actually works as as designed I'm not sure how tidy I'm gonna make these I may just kind of zip tie them up where they're at and just leave it I don't know yeah, at least for right now I may come back later and spruce it up a little bit but Well, it seems like all my work playing around with that is going to pay off. Uh, and you noticed that it does have a little, little blow by coming out of the valve covers. Uh, this thing has a lot of ring gap. Uh, tolerances are a little looser than normal for like a regular street engine because I did build this as a power adder engine. So it does have a little more blow by than what it maybe should if it was a, a tighter engine. But it's got a lot of ring gap. It's ready for some nitrous. This will help evacuate the crankcase and uh, yeah, help out make some power, hopefully, and maybe run a little cleaner. I think, you know, once I get some more miles on this engine, it don't really have it. I bet I only have like 20, 30 miles on the engine and plus all the dyno pulls. So it still needs to be broken a little bit. Hopefully the rings will seat a little bit better. Uh, I'm not concerned about it. Um, it is what it is. That's kind of the way the nature of the beast, I guess, with with these. Anyhow, and you also notice that this camera picks up every little engine noise. And that engine is just a little bit noisy with the roller rockers, full roller rockers, and just a little bit of lash here and there. So, no alarms. It's When it's not on camera, it sounds like it should. So, uh, yeah, well wrap this thing up i appreciate you guys watching hopefully you guys learned something uh maybe maybe what not to do maybe maybe you've been trying to think of if you want to run a crankcase evac system and i've already talked to a couple friends of mine that have run them before on a street car and now they realize why they were blowing oil seals out of their engine because the crankcase evacuation system wasn't working with exhaust on it uh i've said it several times before in these videos that Everything I'm doing is working for my application. It's working for what I'm doing. Your results may vary. You may not want to run hose all the way down to the outlet of your exhaust. That's that's fine. Um, but this is what I'm going to run on mine because I want that uh, evacuation while I'm going down the highway also. And yeah. So that's squeaky is one step closer to doing its thing. I still got fuel cell I want to do. I'm not sure... I'm still not sure what I'm going to do with that. So I've got this plastic one right here. It's like an 8 gallon. I don't like the way the lid seals. I may try to work on the threads on that. Because it doesn't really thread all the way down. Um, you know, the, I've thought about moving the factory fuel tank. Instead of going crossways in the back of the bed. Actually bolt it to the rear pasture side fender well on the inside. 
that way still it's still back there it's still functional I still have fuel gauge it's only 16 gallons um and it's on the weights where it needs to be kind of offset me on the driver's side uh, i don't know uh, we'll cross that bridge when we get there but i do need to get that figured out so i can get my fuel lines run to where it'll pass tech because they won't pass tech with all that hose right now so i'll quit rambling i'll let you guys go thanks for watching and until next time, y'all keep your square bodies rolling. We'll catch you later.